It's a dark part of our Hawaii history that is rarely talked about. Five females murdered on Oahu in the 1980s, and police believe it was the work of a serial killer. A suspect was never charged, but we spoke with the brother of one of the victims, and he's hoping police can use new technology to solve this cold case. January 1986, Regina Sakamoto was only 17. Yeah, she was uh, late for school that day. She was in Waipau. Um, she was sitting at the bus stop in front of diners in Waipau. That was the last time anyone saw Regina alive. She was abducted, raped, strangled and bound. Her body found floating off Ke'ehi Lagoon. Omar was in the fifth grade at the time. I used to look up to her. I mean, she babysitting me and stuff like that. And very bookish and smart and fun-loving, you know, everybody's friend kind of thing. Regina was the second of five people whose bodies were found with their hands tied behind their backs. All were female, between 17 and 36 years old. The killings prompted HPD to form a task force that included an FBI profiler who helped put together a profile of the person they believed could be the suspect. He was described as a Caucasian male in his 30s to 40s with no criminal record. The profiler also suspected the killer targeted women near where he lived or worked. And he's an individual who may be at this particular juncture experiencing marital or girlfriend problems. And the selection of victims is probably the result of opportunity or chance encounters. Eventually, a suspect was arrested, but he was never charged. And unfortunately, he has since passed away. Gary Diaz was head of HPD's homicide detail at the time. Based on the evidence that we had and uh, the witnesses that we had, because we did have witnesses and we did have physical evidence, uh, we felt we had enough. What would you like to see happen at this point? Uh, if it, if I really would prefer like DNA testing and you know, stuff like that just to make sure, you know, if the guy's innocent, the guy's innocent, you know. DNA could have been a much greater asset for us in that particular case. At the time, all they could do was test for blood type. And um, it's useless in today's age because 82% of the people of the world are types O and types A. And unfortunately back then, there was no cell phone video and surveillance video wasn't common. Digital evidence is extremely important toward the advancement of, of investigations. It's, it's kind of sad that both my parents won't be, you know, they're not here to, I mean, if it does get resolved, they're not here to see it. Just, you know, I just want, uh, what is that, closure? We started asking HPD about the serial killer case and the Diane Suzuki and Lisa Ao cases last month. Today, we finally learned HPD's homicide detectives are stepping up efforts to review cold cases. That includes looking for untested evidence and any evidence that should be retested using updated technology. And the department has created a database with all the information on what's been tested and what needs to be retested. That should help current and future investigators. So what about retesting evidence in the serial killer Diane Suzuki and Lisa Ao cases? Well, HPD says it can't comment on that because those cases are still open. But added, quote, we will pursue all leads, whether it's from someone who has new information or a new form of DNA testing. We are committed to getting justice for victims and their families, no matter how long it takes, end quote.